morning, Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. Um, or hello, Instagram. Um, wherever you're seeing this, um, most likely YouTube or Facebook. If you're on Facebook, you are live. Uh, if you are in the morning, uh, 9-15, it's 9-15, September 3rd. And um, let's see. Um, it is the We're approaching Labor Day weekend. Today is Friday. We had a super swamped night last night. Um, we are apolo- we apologize if um, we had to turn you away last night. Uh, we are um, at capacity a lot of nights, uh, and it's fantastic. Hopefully, that trend will continue throughout the fall. People have been asking me if we're gonna, uh, if the state or the, uh, jazz night is popular, right? Yeah, jazz night has been popular uh, Thursday night. So with, when it doesn't rain, jazz night happens in the garden, weather permitting, temperature permitting, all that kind of stuff. Because uh, it is September third right now, we are gonna start seeing cooler nights. And last night it was like, ooh, we, maybe we should turn on the heater here. Um, so it's, it's starting to get a little chillier. Uh, only high of 70-ish today, 75, 72 or something. Uh, so I'm going to go on a bike ride here in a bit. Um, to dress a little warmer than normal. Yesterday I did High Point. Um, by the way, the title of this is Don't Get Yourself in a Pickle. Um, I am going to talk about pickles, just so you know. Um, I am going to talk about pickles. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. If you can just start dropping some comments, hashtag live. Um... Jay, did you get a notification yet that it was live? Just came in? Okay, good. All right. So the topic today is going to be about pickles itself. Yes, the actual pickle. Um, don't get yourself in a pickle. Um, but just a little bit of um, general general information to begin with. Um, yesterday was a beautiful day. I got out and ran to High Point from uh, Sam's Point parking lot. It's about a six, um, about a six and a half miler. And I got out with uh, my favorite running partner of all time. My favorite partner. That is, there you go, out the glare. That is uh, Barolo. That's Barolo. That's the Border Collie. Um, Baxter no longer runs. Baxter is 16 years old. He wants to run. Um, his ACLs just kind of give out on him um, when we start getting out on the trails. So uh, he is out of commission for that um, but he wants to run and he tries to run every day um, so tons of energy 16 years old uh, Barolo is um, Barolo is six or seven years old so really great trail dog um, does not need a leash stays right with me in fact both of both of the border collies when they ran with me he's six or seven is maybe he's seven yeah yeah, I don't, yeah. So who knows? Uh, time flies. Time flies. This is the trail yesterday going to um, uh, High Point. So water all washed out there. So um, that's him running in front of me. So Baxter and Barolo, when they would both run with me, and Barolo too, I just have to say, stay with me. And he goes right into my ankles. And he will just run right on my ankles. And both dogs did that. Baxter and Barolo uh, would do that. One on each ankle. And I'd have to be careful because they were so close to me. Sometimes I'd almost like trip uh, from them being so close. Uh, but re- both of them have been fantastic trail dogs. Um, Baxter was the one I was the one that fell down um, the ravine several years ago. Um, 60 feet he fell down, slid down into the ravine. And we had to um, get, uh, I went down after him, couldn't get back up. Um, we had to have the fire department had to come and drop down a, a hoist and um, strap us up and bring us up one at a time. Um, that was an experience that day. Um, he just saw water and he turned and just slipped right on down the ravine here up by the above the waterfalls here as you leave Ellenville. It was an interesting, scary day that turned out okay. And once he got back up to the top, we ran back to the car <laughs> and I took him back the next day so he wasn't freaked out. So, uh, Hiking here is really, really awesome. Uh, the trails are awesome. So let's see. Uh, don't get yourself in a pickle. All right, so I want to talk about pickles really quick. Uh, a little bit about pickles. Pickles are like an American favorite. Uh, most restaurants have pickles of some type in the restaurant. We put them on burgers. We put them we put them everywhere. Uh, in fact, runners will actually take pickle juice because it's vinegar to help uh, get rid of the lactic acid buildup in their system. 
Uh, so the vinegar actually helps with that, the vinegar in the pickles. So, but I'm going to tell you more in depth about really what's in that pickle. Don't get yourself in a pickle. So we buy natural pickles. We buy pickles that have no funky chems in it. And people are going to say, well, why would they put funky chems in pickles to begin with? Folks, it is America. And when they figure out how to make food cheaper with cheaper ingredients, last longer, preservatives, plump them up, make them look better in color, this and that, our food manufacturers here will do that. They have mastered that. They have totally mastered giving us terrible food, um, food that is loaded with junks, chems, preservatives, crap, all that kind of stuff. We are very well known and have our American food producers have perfected that. So here's some basic ingredients in pickles. I have so many windows open here. All right. So this is from um, Patriot Pickle. Patriot Pickle is a local company, and um, they market their product as a natural product. Uh, and sustainable when you go to their website sustainable natural this and that so here is what's in their pickles okay first of all cucumbers which we can expect cucumbers water salt granulated sugar this is their i'm not sure this so this is a candied cross cut so it has sugar in it um vinegar there's the vinegar all right natural flavors natural flavors now that is a very broad term natural flavors natural flavors can be artificially made. It doesn't make sense, but this is what it is. Natural flavors can be artificially made because it's just mimicking a natural flavor. They're mimicking blueberries. They're mimicking whatever the flavor they're mimicking. So cereals and, and yogurts and things like this are great for, quote, unquote, natural flavors made from artificial ingredients. But it's mimicking an, a natural flavor, so they can call it a natural flavor. Uh, spices, turmeric, sodium benzate sodium benzate the same stuff in pepsi cola uh calcium chloride and edta now those last three ingredients folks can be an issue now some pickle companies don't have that but you have to pay more for those pickles these pickles here are going to retain their color longer retain their firmness they're going to do things that a natural pickle's not going to quite do so of course chefs love this restaurants love this it's less waste, it's more uniform, the consumer likes it, but they don't really understand what's actually in the pickle. So um, those three ingredients right there, just a little recap of what those ingredients could mean. Calcium chloride. So if you go to drugs.com or any website out there, Livestrong has some odd good side effects to a food. Uh, there's a lot of great sites out there that you can look up and type in the ingredient and put side effects and we'll get the whole rundown. So, um, you know, people, when we were filming the other day, uh, with uh, with Wen Jay and the crew from Hudsey TV, they ordered takeout food, and they brought it back to the restaurant after they were done filming at three three thirty. They brought back the food, and she has she Wen Jay has some allergies, and a lot of us have allergies. We just don't know about it because you know we just don't associate you know getting a headache, being fatigued, um, poor digestion, things like that with actually a side effect, and those indeed are side effects. Okay, so. Um, she takes a bite out of her food, and she told told the place, you know, what, what she could have, what she couldn't have. Takes a bite of the food, and she was like, um, I need a Benadryl. Um, I don't feel good. Something's in this food that that's, that's, I'm, rea I'm reacting to. Um, and she goes, there's no dairy in here. She wanted it dairy-free. So it's some other kind of chemical or some kind of preservative that immediately gave her a reaction. She's very sensitive. Some people are very sensitive. And this is part of her reason why she's promoting this real food and doing the Valley to Table show and showcasing farmers and has this great co-op CSA in, in Brooklyn and opened up a restaurant because she wants to promote and promote and educate people. So she takes this bite of this food and she's like, oh, something's wrong. Um, and we saw her face was a little red and she's like, so, so, yeah, something's wrong with this. But it didn't have what she wanted. But there was something else in the food. And these chemicals happen all over the place. Something as simple as pickles. The calcium chloride in pickles can give mood changes, dizziness, um, change how much urine you pass, um, abnormal heartbeat, back pain. Um, I mean, on and on. There's are are these major things? Probably not. Are people most people going to have these? Have these? Probably not. But if you're having if you're having issues, and you know it, you have to look at every ingredient. If you really want to care about not having any issues in the future, then you have to look at every ingredient and really look at it. 
and understand what is in your food. Understand you have a choice to make. You can spend a few bucks more and get a product that is far superior for your health, for the planet, uh, for everything. So that's your choice. And when it comes down to it, like when people say, oh, you know, people haven't told us, people used to tell us we were expensive. They haven't told us we we're expensive in a while. We actually lowered our prices during the pandemic. And we raised, we had to raise our prices a couple of weeks ago, uh, maybe two months ago, a month or so ago, just because food is through the roof. Um, but you know, people say, oh, your food's expensive, this and that. I pay twice the amount of pickles that any other restaurant does because we're buying legit natural pickles, all right? Legit natural pickles. None of, the, none of this funky stuff in it. But the average consumer wouldn't know that. So calcium chloride right there. Um, sodium benzate. Benzate. That is what's in soda, folks. Our soda doesn't have it. Our soda doesn't have any of that funky stuff in it. But Coca-Cola, Pepsi, all these sodas, they have that in there. And again, it's not much, but folks, we're talking about consuming um, consuming this every single, um, people can just consume soda every single day, right? So sodium benzate helps preventing in mold growth. Its interaction with the ascorbic acid is cause for grave concern. Its reaction with vitamin C produces benzene that is notorious for causing cancer in humans. Okay, not, not, not bad. <laughs> A host of studies have shown that long-term exposure to benzene can lead to bone marrow failure and leukemia. Also, there's a possibility that benzene levels may increase, and this goes on and on. Salad dressing packets, uh, jams and jars, fruit I mean, it goes on and on here. Um, anytime you get fruit, though, like the jam or something, there's typically ascorbic acid in there uh, just because it's used as another preservative. So, um, and this thing goes on and on and on here. This is a, a, a good, a good, nice size article um, from Nutrineet um, about the dangers of it. So, of course, that's in soda. Now, imagine having a soda with this. Imagine sitting down in a restaurant having a burger bun with, with bromide. Bromide is another one of those things that's banned in other countries that's not banned in America. Your bread, your bread from your bun has bromide. Your, your burger has all kinds of hormones and antibiotics. Um, all kinds of residuals in that, what the cow is eaten, right, gets passed through. This was something that Wen Jay and I had an in-depth conversation was about, you know, things get just concentrated from you are what you eat and what you're eating is what they ate. It all goes, it all goes around in a circle and ends up in your body, right? So we had a great conversation about just the levels of bioconcentration from the water, the soil health, the contaminants to the grass, to the cow, to the grain, to the person, to the human, and it just goes on and on and on. We're in this cycle of of, of eating this terrible food and, and experiencing the worst health in history. Our health isn't getting better. As a, as a whole, you look at everything, it keeps getting worse and worse and worse, more degenerative diseases. Um, you know, the, the cancers, cancer's a very serious issue. Heart disease is a very serious issue. And there's no really focus on on a national level to say, hey, let's get this crap out of our food. Let's get back to real food. Let's do much more education. But you go to your doctor, your doctor's like, oh, you want to be healthier? Um, have some salmon. Go eat some salmon. Salmon's great for you. But never telling you the difference that there's two types of salmon. One of the salmon, 95% of the salmon on the market is toxic. It's one of the world's most toxic food, farm salmon. So a guest came to me last night and they go, Marcus, I watched your videos on salmon. I went to your website. I don't eat any more farm salmon, thank you. And I was like, no, no, thank you. Thank you, because that makes a difference. We have to stop, stop, start saying no to the crap that these, that, the, that these restaurants and grocery stores and food manufacturers are giving us. Yesterday, when I was on my run up to High Point, um, there was a, an ad for, oh, you know, you can study now and make studying fun by having natural Pringles or natural Doritos, and it's Doritos made with better ingredients. Folks, they know we want the better ingredients. They know they know we're getting smarter. They know that. So um, some of them will, will throw us a bone every now and then and say, yeah, we have better ingredients on a national level. But when you look at the overall food system, it's, 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 it's terrible. It's really, really terrible. And these are the things that are causing you are what you eat. These are the things that are causing degenerative diseases these are the things people say oh no it's just my it's just my my genetics you know my genetics i just can't get away from it <laughs> folks you can make a big difference bruce lipton world's foremost geneticist i listened i've listened to him many many times um he claims that less than five percent of your genes are actually a result of your health he's claiming less than five percent um 
what you're doing in the meantime can activate some genes but really it's 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 people don't people don't i told i said to wen jay uh the host of the show the valley table i said if people woke up with six layers of teeth the next day from eating genetically modified food they'd stop doing it but it's such a slow trickle a slow trickle of what's happening our, to our bodies that we just we just keep doing it and then we get in that denial stage like oh it couldn't have been the food it couldn't have been you know that i smoked for so long it couldn't have been that i was 40 pounds over it couldn't have been that right so then they start denying it. it's just my genes you know i'm prone to this my father had it my grandfather had it my cousin had it my dog had it um you know my neighbor had it it's just so then it's just like it's just you know it's just what it is and you can make a vast difference when you start eating better watching everything and really focusing and people saying oh i eat, I eat fine marcus i eat fine and when i talked about their diet it's like okay really you consider you consider chicken with hormones and antibiotics um that are fried it's fried it's cooked in oil denatured oil canola oil <laughs> modified corn oil and then you top it with some type of cheese and more oil in the side i'm like everything you have just ate is loaded with chems chemicals 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 hormones hormones you know you to the point where you know people say well you know, i just eat you know skinless chicken folks Skinless chicken has hormones in it. It has other things in it besides the skin. People think, equate, oh, make it skinless. It's less fatty. It must be healthy for me. I'll grill it instead of this or I'll bake it instead of this. There's still other things in there that are very, very questionable that are that could, could be a detriment to your health. Um, so uh, let's see. There's another ingredient, EDTA. EDTA is um, also used um, as chelation, so they actually inject it into you. EDA... Um, uh, is also used as a food additive um uh so yeah so you can look that up too folks i would just recommend you know edta is probably the safest out of those two three ingredients of the three ingredients that i listed um uh, depletes your bones of crucial i don't know what the, okay um so yeah look, look so, folks do some research look it up do not use google as a search engine do not use Google as a search engine. Google buries this kind of stuff. Google likes to, unfortunately, duck, duck, go. Um, when you're looking up, when you want to look up alternative health, when you look up things like this, Google's not the best search engine. Um, Google references Wikipedia a lot. Wikipedia has over 200 editors that do nothing but fight anything that's skeptical. So a food additive is skeptical because the food industry wants these they want them really bad. We don't want them, right? We don't want them. So if we say, you know, post an article, write this and this and this about, you know, um, calcium chloride, Wikipedia skews things based upon their skeptic. They literally have a skeptic. It's, it's a skeptic board of editors. There's 200 people that do nothing but talk about skeptical things. Anything that's skeptical, they go in and they, they, they make it fit the narrative. So... And it goes down to all this. And then Google gets money from, I'm sorry, Wikipedia gets money from one of the Google. <laughs> Google and Wikipedia work very, very, very closely together. Extremely closely together. So um, that's why they work closely together financially, very closely financially, and they work together. There's actually a lawsuit out there on Wikipedia right now um, because a big lawsuit was launched on them because they, they skew a lot of things. If you look at certain, like if you look at an alternative doctor, they will tell you everything bad the doctor's ever done um, and never tell you how many patients they've worked with, how many lives they've saved, and this and that. The reason why alternative doctors get a bad rap, some of these cancer clinics and some of these doctors that are working, um, oh, this person killed this person. In a lot of cases, these alternative alternative health practitioners that are working with, with cancer patients are extreme cancer patients because most people go to them the very last step. They've tried the traditional protocols and it hasn't worked. And what do I have left to lose? Let me go to a person. Let me go to somebody who's alternative. So at that point, a lot of these people are very far gone, unfortunately. And other points, like Sloan. Sloan, when, when, when they feel they can't work with somebody anymore, I know the one oncologist, there's one oncologist that will send somebody to, 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 the, to this guy who's really good with cancer if you go to him in the beginning. But once you've already been that far down, it's hard for it's hard for anything to work so of course now they say okay here you go 
here's another patient you can work with after the person after the person you know is is you know 24 hours from death unfortunately and then all of a sudden the, the alternative health practitioner well the, the so-and-so is in the care of this person and um but it doesn't talk about you know the the the, the failed procedures prior to that so Wikipedia will really skew a lot of these healthcare practitioners to anything that, and if they speak out about anything, it's all just negative, 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 and you cannot get your Wikipedia um, profile changed. They cannot get it changed. So a lot of these healthcare practitioners launched a major lawsuit against Wikipedia because it's it's just total nonsense with what they do in the health world. So do not get your information from Wikipedia. It is crazy, crazy, crazy. Good morning, everybody tuning in. I just got back into my camera here. I was looking online. Good morning, everybody. Don, Maveen, Joel, um, Jennifer. So, um, and so, Nolan Ryan, who's all the picture would soak his hand in pickle brine after each time he pitched, um, helped him with the blisters. That's pretty cool. Thanks for that information, Joel. Um, so yeah, so folks, it's up to you. It's up to you for your health. It's totally up for you for your health, and especially right now during COVID. Um, you really need to understand what options you have for treatment, um, what options you have to eat healthier. You, this is all up, all up to you. And then when they say, oh, you know, people, <clears throat> people act differently, uh, differently to it. Of course, they react differently to, to being exposed to COVID. Some people's immune systems totally fight it off, and some people's don't. And the people say, well, I know healthy people that didn't fight it off. <clears throat> There's always some type of underlying factor, right? So when I was a kid, I don't remember if remembers in Ellenville, but back in 83, 84, 84, 84, 1984, there was a couple of kids who had full-blown tuberculosis in our school system here. And they were actually my neighbors. And um, so I was around them. I didn't know it was around them. And when it finally came out, I mean, they had full-blown tuberculosis. And so <clears throat> everybody in school here got tested for it in school. If you were in their classes, they, so, you know, they, they tested. And I remember g getting taken on a bus and taken to the health, you know, the county health office in Kingston. They took a bunch of us that were exposed, and I, show, I tested positive for it. I tested positive for tuberculosis at, um, at gee, 10 years old. Um, I didn't have it. I didn't have the symptoms. I didn't have it, but I was exposed, so my body fought it off as a 10-year-old. Um, <clears throat> so, of course, my neighbors didn't fight it off, and they had it. Uh, and it was, it was unfortunate. So we all react to things differently. We all react to things differently. So if we know that and we know our immune system is a key to this, why aren't we doing things to honor our immune system? Why aren't we doing this to honor our immune system? So that should be first and foremost here. People wear gloves. I see people wearing gloves. Gloves are a terrible idea in most cases because people abuse the gloves. They wear these gloves for an hour, for half an hour, and they touch multiple surfaces. The gloves harbor bacteria. You know, gloves are a one-time use. So you put a glove on, you touch the item you're doing in the kitchen and we touch the item we're doing, then we take the glove off and throw it out and we start with a new glove if we're going to grab beef versus grabbing fish to grabbing a tomato to grabbing lettuce. It's all different gloves and a lot of places will just use the same glove. A lot of consumers will walk around the store touching, touching groceries and then touching the thing and they're actually doing worse harm by doing that. When this whole first, when the pandemic first hit, I was wearing gloves in a store. I'd go into a store with gloves. But at the same time, I had alcohol, I'll rubbing alcohol as a spray bottle hung onto the shopping cart. And I would spray the shopping cart down. I'd spray my hands down with the gloves on, with the gloves on. Spray that down. I touched the keypad. I even spray the keypad down um, because a lot of keypads are covered with plastic for the credit cards. <clears throat> I'd even spray the keypad down and then my hands down like this and then touch because at the beginning, we had no we had no idea, right? We just, you know, in the, in the last March, April, I mean, there was, I mean, we were, people were afraid to walk out on the streets. Um, and uh, so we just didn't know about the transmission and things. So I had, um, I would wear gloves everywhere, but I would straight take the alcohol and do that. So... So that was that, that was that was crucial for, for for me to not spread bacteria somewhere. But you see people with gloves just going everywhere and they spread bacteria. Um, I still wear gloves when I pump gas. 
I always wear gloves when I pump gas. I have done this for years. I keep a bag of, of latex gloves, and that gas handle, that gas handle was just touched by somebody who was picking their nose, rubbing their eyes, went to the bathroom, didn't wash their hands, eating a donut, right, touching money. Um, that's what that gas handle was just touched by. And those gas handles are not cleaned. I can guarantee there's no, there's nobody out there wiping down gas handles um, at, a, at a gas station. No, no staff is. Have you ever seen anybody do that? No. So I put on a glove and I pump the gas. And then when I grab my receipt, my glove is off by then because I'm grabbing clean paper. So I don't want to take what I just touched the, 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 the gas handle with with the latex glove and then grab the paper because that just you transfer, you transfer bacteria. So. Um, um, so from that point, then I throw the glove out. Unfortunately, using a glove, using like this glove, it ends in, in, ends up in a in a landfill. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that's what happens. Um, but um, I'm trying to be safe and do that. So uh, let's see what else. Um, what else can I say here? So yeah, don't get yourself in a pickle. Read ingredients on everything, folks. Just read ingredients. The the stuff it's in clear daylight. They have to list the ingredients in most things. Certain things they don't like wine, alcohol. Alcohol is loaded with tons, up to 80, 80 additives can go into wine here in the U.S. Fifty five and fifty something in in Europe and not on the label because it's not regulated by the USDA or the FDA. The the wine and liquor industry. So they're in a whole nother n- another department. So um, that's the story with that. Um, so you won't we won't find and. and let me tell you something. Alcohol is loaded with chems, fillers, additives, things like that, glycerin, sugars, colorings, flavorings. It's all in there. So that's the story with that. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in. I've got to head out of here. Uh, it's Friday. Busy, busy weekend. A couple catering parties this weekend. And uh, that's it for now. Everybody have a great weekend. Get some sunlight. Get some exercise. Get some fresh air. Drink lots of water. And eat some healthy food. Talk to you later.